Hey everybody, uh, Fullberry45 here. Uh, today we're going to dive into uh, my hand loads for the 6.8 Western. Picked up uh, my Browning X Bolt Pro Macmillan uh, a year or two ago. And I got it so early on that I couldn't even find factory loaded ammunition. Uh, so my primary uh, loads was using brand new Winchester brass, which was the only thing available, of course. And then I had found some Nosler Acubon long range bullets, this pack here. So this is the uh, 165 grain um, with uh, the BC of 62, 0.62. Um, so started off with some primary load development there uh, with one major missing component, which was a chronograph. So didn't have a chronograph at the time. I was waiting for something better than one of the uh, the light based ones or even the, the lab radar. I heard there was new ones coming out from Garmin. So I held off without a chronograph until those were released. So my first couple uh, shots at the time were uh, using H40. H4350, very commonly used powder for 6.5 Creedmoor and everything. So a little um, less performing for these heavy grain bullet weights in the 6.8 Western. 6 .8 Western. Uh, you know, if you want to use the heavy grain weights, it's best to use more of the H1000. But at the beginning, components were hard to find during uh, the tough times. So I used H4350 uh, initially and did some uh, couple shots for groups. Like I said, not having a chronograph, mainly just going up towards max uh, by published hydrogen data, going up by 0.5 grains until uh, shooting groups of three, until I found um, a group that uh, looked great to me. So with there was very promising groups surprisingly with the H4350 but uh, far away from max charge so I had a, a quite a few uh, you know towards the starting side that were grouping very nice so I knew right away the the rifle had potential but with this powder and this heavy grain of a bullet I knew it wasn't going to be getting the high velocities I was looking for so uh, I was happy when I then found H1000 powder. So H1000 powder, much slower burn rate, better for um, cartridges like the 6.8 Western with his heavy for caliber uh, bullets. So still without a chronograph at this time, I uh, shot three shot groups um, with um, each group having 0.5 difference in powder. So it went through a year like that. Also, in the in the same time, you know, more factory ammo started becoming available, like uh, the Copper Impact here. This is the 162 grain. It's a monolithic bullet. This grouped very well, and uh, so I knew I had lots of options for bullets. But what I'm most excited about is to start uh, loaded load development again from scratch and here's why i got the brand new garmin zero chronograph so this just came out got my hands on it uh it's it's a radar type chronograph not a shoot over um, light base chronograph so here i'm very excited to Get some velocities on the uh, on the six eight Western with the different type of bullets I have. So primarily, I'm going to be doing the ten shot load development to get combustion underway first. So I'm not going to uh, play with seating depth at this time. Uh, on that note, I will say how I found my. Uh, Seating depth 
a lot of you may be familiar with Eric Cortina's uh, jam method where I take uh, a dummy round here um, where there's no primer, no powder, and then fit in my bullet of choice because every bullet is different. So this time I started with the Sierra tipped Game King. This is the heaviest bullet in the 277 caliber, 270, 6A Western. Uh, this is the yeah, 175 grain. So fitting it in the case neck of an empty case and then simply chambering your round and then taking uh, measurements from base to O-drive with your uh, calibers. So uh, it's good to do this two or three or five times. And then uh, Eric Cortina says you, you take the average or take the shortest one, but it really doesn't matter. You're just trying to find the, the, the point, a starting point where the bullet hits the lands and grooves. And say, if you have the shortest measurement, that's your starting point. That's the longest your cartridge is ever going to be. Uh, but we back off from there even 20 thousandths. So that's what I did for my initial seating depth. So had the uh, calipers measure a few times at jam minus 0 0.02, which is 20 thousandths. And then that gives me my starting or my longest seating depth. From there, once we have combustion under control and find a powder charge, then we could tune the seating depth back uh, by three thousandths of time and shoot for groups. So I was um, excited to start focusing on uh, powder charge and uh, good SD and good extreme spread before looking at groups which could always be tuned with seating depth. Some people shoot for groups based on powder charge, uh, which you know can play with barrel harmonics, but mainly it's best to get combustion and those low SDs and uh, the low extreme spreads based on what your rifle likes for the powder charge with that bill of combination. And then from there you tune in the groups with seating depth. So all that to say, I'm starting uh, with the Sierra Tip Game King. I'm going to load up 10 rounds. Instead of 0.5 grains, uh, which is commonly used, this method is more accurate to go in 2 tenths grain increments. It's uh, common uh, in cartridge sizes uh, like the 6.5 Creedmoor. But since the six point Western is a Magnum with a larger case capacity, uh, we could get away with doing two or uh, 0.3 increments. Uh, right here is just a 6.8 Western cartridge, brand new loaded with a primer. Uh, so as this is a, a Magnum size case, it's uh, commonly known to get away with doing 0.3 uh, grain weights increments. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to use two types of powder. So we're going to use the H1000 with the Sierra Tip Game King. And then we're also going to use H4831 Shortcut. Uh, both powders are known to be good with 6.8 Western. Um, the H1000 is going to be a little slower burn. So I'm thinking it might be better with the heaviest green bullet we have here. Um, I also have, as we get some data for, with this bullet, these powder combinations, um, I'll test out the theory of doing, you know, the 10 shot ladder method, find the flat spots in the velocity. That's what we're looking for. And then, then tuning for seating depth and going for groups. So I'm going to do this a couple of times. First, starting with the Sierra Tip Game King. I also have the Nosler Ballistic Tip. This is the uh, 170 grain, so we can play with that. This has a BC, I don't have it in front of me right now, it's not another box. I could 
post that in the description below. Uh, and then, like I said, also I have the Acribond Long Range. So I have three different bullet types and two powders. I'm gonna leave the H48, uh, 4350 away uh, with the 6A Western for now. So we're gonna load 10 shots of each in each powder. I'm, I'm first gonna start at max. I know Hodgson lead load data is very conservative, very far away from actual max, but for this test, we're gonna start at max, work our way down by uh, three tenths. But I'm also gonna load up um, four above max in three tenths, or uh, yeah, three tenths increments. And then, you know, of course, starting on the lower end of the charges, walking up, uh, or taking note of velocities, and uh, checking for pressure signs as we get there. So for the H1000 with this bullet, um, max by Hodgson is uh, saying 59.1 grains, and already people online are really hitting over 60 grains with this bullet combination, but you know, Hodgson only posts 59.1. So from there, we'll load down three tenths. We have one at 59.1, one at 58.8, and then 58.5, 58.2, 57.9, and so on. And I'll also load up over max charge by three tenths increments. So we have 59.4, 59.7, 60, and our highest will be 60.3 grains. So, and then as for the H4831 shortcut, it's a uh, smaller grain weights. So that max on Hodgson is 54 grains with the 175 grain bullet. So we'll load up 10 of those as well. And then we'll go shoot it over the, uh, the Garmin Zero. So from there, we're uh, gonna post a video of doing the uh, initial load development over the chronograph and then taking notes of velocities. And we're gonna be looking for those, those flat spots in our graph. I have a graph pre-made that all I have to do is put in the velocities. Um, the grain weights are already entered on the uh, x-axis of the chart. So then we'll look for those flat spots where um, changes in powder uh, has minimal effect on velocity. So from one uh, charge weight to the other, it has minimal change on the velocity. So that is a node, which we're going to dissect, which means, you know, variance in powder throws, whether uh, whatever type of press you're using, and uh, conditions change where, you know, you have a couple of grains more or not, has little change on velocity. So equaling uh, less extreme spread and better standard deviation. So we're going to start there and then we'll uh, we'll get back, put it in the data, look for the nodes, and um, we'll see where we end up on our load development. So we'll see you soon.